I asked Uncle Bucko to get up early so we could get that Chevy 2 of Billy's down to my house as quickly as possible Wednesday morning. Making me breakfast first, chump. Jeremy had taken the car down to his house to give it a bath and get it cleaned up after we had to tow it home in the snow. But Uncle Bucko is in no hurry. That's right. Bring the car in when I'm done eating. The car died on the test drive three times when we went to look at it. I'm going to call this car a day at the races. Marx Brothers. Scram. I think I see a sucker coming now. In Jeremy's opinion, we should have never brought this thing home. And I'm not so sure I don't agree with him. Billy handed over the check to the guy and told him he'd take it before we ever even heard the car run. Like a pile. Oh, what the hell you guys were thinking? Brakes don't work, don't run worth the crap. I hope the gas gauge works, Jesus. Now I have to admit, I have some of the same concerns that Jeremy has, especially about the brakes. All over the road. Wonder brakes, I wonder where I'm gonna go. As bad as the brakes are, the carburetor and the transmission are worse. You got a nice slush box when you get into it. It's like, hey, I better get going. For some reason, the car idles pretty decent, but outside of idling, it runs terrible. Part throttle cruise, non-existent. If it's not idling or wide open throttle, it barely runs. So as soon as Jeremy gets it down here, I wanna back the Malibu out and bring the Nova in so we can dive into this thing and see what in the world is wrong with this little small block Chevy. Fine pile we have here, fine pile. Keep in mind, I only live about one mile from Jeremy. So in one mile of traveling in this car, he's completely fallen in love with it. Well, what do you think of that thing? I thought you went with him to keep him from doing something like that. It doesn't run all right, it doesn't stop all right. The heat works, that's about it. What about the speedometer? So now that Jeremy and I have both had our breakfast, it's time for me to back the Malibu out of the shop and bring the Nova in. Now I've been working on old Chevys like this Chevy too since I was a senior in high school. And this little 65 seems to be plagued with all the most common problems that plague older muscle cars and street rods. Mixed matched cooling systems, haphazard wiring, mixed matched and burnt plug wires, missing fan shrouds and flex fans fully capable of amputation, incorrect advance curves and distributors, vacuum leaks and kick down cable adjustments, poorly tuned carburetors and automatic chokes, and of course my all time favorite, tapered seat spark plugs meant for cast iron heads, installed in aluminum heads that use gasketed seats. So I immediately make a phone call down to Mark at A1 to check and see if he's got the exact spark plugs I need. While Jeremy pulls the rest of the spark plugs out, I fired up the 64 to let it warm up and then I start creating a list of all the problem areas and issues that I see on the car that need to be taken care of immediately if not sooner. Now some of the stuff that's wrong with this car, I'm going to have to go to Jags and maybe even Restoration World down in Dayton. But a lot of it is going to come from my buddy down at Buckeye Lake, Mark Huntsman at A1 Auto Parts. Now Mark's already seen the video of us bringing that Nova home and he's preparing for battle. What do you want? What are you wearing that for? Well, I'm ready. You're ready for what? Well, I'm ready for that new addition to the family. Yeah, you're gonna get beat over the head with a 65 Nova you now. You got that right. I need a set of spark plugs for a 65 Nova. Really? Yep, mm -hmm. but not the stock ones. Not the stock ones. Okay, so the spark plugs was pretty easy because he stocks all these NGK plugs for us anyway. Got a new project to come buy all your parts for. Nice. More taters. And more trips for Uncle Bucko to come oh, down here and see great. you. Hey, by the way, could you do me a favor? What? The last time he was in here, I'm pretty sure that he left these behind. What is it? I, 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 I think these are his. I, I'm pretty sure he left them behind. Maybe those belong to Thing too. Oh, now that's possible. Well, it he's is? not here. We can't ask you because he, he's got pink eye. He's got pink eye. Pink eye? Yeah, but well, that, now that could be the problem. Yeah, I'm not even He's quarantined to the rag shop. Right. Quarantined to the rag shop? Yes, he can't, he can't be around anybody. He's, he's stuffing boxes. Stuffing boxes full of rags with pink eye. You're right. You sure you want your customers to know that oh, a guy with pink well, eyes down there stuffing underwear in boxes? He's wearing gloves. <laughs> he's got full protection. <laughs> so once I got done hanging around with Mark down at A1, I head back to the shop and bring Jeremy eight brand new NGK spark plugs to install in this small block. 
How do you like putting spark plugs in a Chevy too with headers? Let's just say it's not one of Jeremy's most favorite projects we've ever tackled here in the shop. Once he finished putting all eight plugs in, it was time to gather up all the tools off the car and fire it up. You ready yet? Thankfully, the car fired right up and Jeremy got all the plug wires put back on the correct plugs. The engine idles smooth and sounds perfectly healthy, but I'm going to back it out in the driveway and let the car warm up for a few minutes before we take it for a test drive and see if we've made any improvements on drivability. It doesn't run too bad. Now. Oh, this runs better than it did? Yeah. It's got this really bad uh, dead spot in the carburetor. See when you put on the you put it on the floor, it's got a real bad stumble. So we need to look at that. I think that's probably a power valve adjustment. A little, 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 little. I said, don't, didn't you say you were going to take a carburetor and throw it in the garbage can? Well, probably. Well, there you go. I still want to be able to tune it. I want to be able to teach people what the situation is, what the problem is, and how to fix it. Let's go up there and put some gas in it before we run out of gas. <laughs> oh, our turn signals don't work. Watch out there, Yahoo! Oh, no power steering. Vicky's old C10 and this Nova share one thing in common: modern gas pumps just don't get along with these older fuel tanks. If you pull the handle wide open, it shuts off almost immediately. It's pretty frustrating, especially when it's this cold outside. But there is some good news. The spark plugs have definitely helped this engine run quite a bit smoother. And now that the engine's fully up to operating temperature, the idle is set just a little bit too high. Now, I didn't know it at the time, but there's definitely a reason for this. And we're about to find that out when we get it back to the shop. Can you hold the hood up for me? Yeah. Now, what's interesting is in this video, you can literally hear a terrible vacuum leak. But there in person, it wasn't nearly as noticeable. At the time, I was more concerned about that valve that was making noise. That's a lot better. It's got a little valve noise on this side. Like maybe it's got a rocker arm a little loose. Hard to tell whether it's a hydraulic roller or it's just a standard hydraulic can. gear but it runs it, <laughs> it it makes pretty good power it's a fast bucket of turds oh wait a minute i almost forgot no electric cutouts i said these for my mouth no got it. So even though we haven't really done a whole lot of tuning to this car, it's already making a lot of progress. The car actually makes really good power at wide open throttle, but drivability is still suffering, which is to be expected. I mean, all we've done so far is put a set of spark plugs in this thing. The car itself is really in pretty decent shape, although it does have quite a bit of Kentucky shade tree engineering left to be dealt with. I feel pretty confident that the vast majority of the problems this car is suffering from is in the carburetor and probably some of the old fuel that's still in the fuel tank. All right, so we got the carburetor off here and it turns out there may not be anything wrong with the carburetor. Let me show you what we found here. This vacuum tee behind the carburetor, which you couldn't see with the carburetor on, 
one is loose in the intake manifold, which is bad, but it also had uh, a vacuum cap missing off this side of it. It definitely had a vacuum leak right there. And that will definitely, <laughs> definitely have an effect on the air fuel ratio. I don't know what I'm gonna do here. I guess we'll just put this carburetor back on, fix the vacuum leak and take it up the road and see what it does. All right, so we went ahead and, and uh, tightened this T up, I spun it around and we replaced this piece of vacuum line. It was too short on this side. Put a vacuum cap on this side and I think we're good to go. Just put the carburetor back on and we'll see what it does. Now, although it takes a little bit longer to do all this the way we're doing it, I don't wanna miss any steps and try to make any corrections to problems that aren't existent. All right, guys, so we got the uh, carburetor all put back on. We're getting ready to fire this thing up for the first time. However, I'm almost 100% certain we're gonna have to retune the idle mixture screws on this carburetor because it was evidently tuned for a vacuum leak. The car sat there and idled really decent. Not perfect, but decent, you know? And now with this vacuum leak fixed, we're probably gonna find out that the idle is set way too low and the idle mixture screws are set way too rich. So let's see what happens here. Now this car still uses a mechanical fuel pump and the carburetor's empty. So it's gonna take a little while to get fueled the bolts. But once the carburetor's got gas in it, Jeremy has to hold the throttle open to keep it running. Because, as I suspected, the idle speed and the idle mixture screws were set to try to cover up a vacuum leak. Once we get the engine to fire up and stay running, I went ahead and set the idle speed up to where the car would stay running and then I start adjusting the idle mixture screws. Typically a good starting point for the idle mixture screws is one and a half turns out from fully closed. What I usually try and do is set the idle mixture screws to let the car idle as lean as possible without having any stumble off idle. It's not uncommon to have to turn the idle mixture screws out a quarter to a full turn to cover up a slight hesitation off idle. And in this case, two turns out from fully closed seem to be the sweet spot. Once I let the car warm up for a few minutes out in the driveway and listen to it run, I decided to take it up the road and see how the engine reacts to the vacuum leak being fixed before I make any changes to the carburetor. The good news is that the drivability, throttle response, and low end torque is much improved. But now we have a new problem. Well, good news, bad news. Definitely runs a lot better. I still think the power valve needs to be changed in it. And also, I think the transmission fluid's low. It seems like the transmission slips a little bit. It comes and goes. So I think the transmission fluid level's a little bit low in the transmission. It's got a stock pan on it, so it doesn't have a whole lot of fluid in it. So if it's low, it's definitely gonna be a problem. We'll take it for a short test drive around the block here real quick. Get the transmission warm. We'll go back and check the transmission fluid maybe make a couple little adjustments to the carburetor. At this point, I'm less than a mile into my test drive when another problem arises. The heater core is leaking on the passenger side floor mat. So I decide while I'm out driving around the car, I might as well head down to see Mark and see if I can play stump a chump with him today on a heater core and maybe even a turn signal switch. As soon as I pulled in the lot, he came straight outside to check this thing out. Now Mark definitely likes old Chevys, but most likely what he's trying to do is come up with a game plan for all the parts he's gonna order in, just in case I might need them. Okay, where do you wanna start? Well, we need to start with heater core and a turn signal switch. Might as well go ahead and add headlight hardware too. Headlight, yeah, I saw they were a little loose. Is this an official stump the chump day? Because I be. know you're not gonna have that stuff here. You it only took Mark about five minutes to come up with the proper headlight retaining springs. But the headlight adjusters, I'll probably have to try and get at Restoration World down in Dayton. And although Mark didn't have the heater core or the turn signal switch in stock, he says he'll have them tomorrow. Well, you owe me a shirt. I do. I missed one piece. One. You know what you're going to make me do? You're going to make me drive clear to Dayton to Restoration World. While I'm busy busting Mark's chops down at A1 over headlight adjusters, Uncle Bucko is up at the farm getting the Lodestar fired up so he can take a load of scrap down to the scrap yard. After that, he's going to go up to Almond Diggers to pick up a load of firewood for my mom and dad. The plan is for him to get all that taken care of while I'm busy down at my shop working on the carburetor on the Chevy 2. 
When I got back to the shop, I went ahead and pulled the dipstick on the transmission, and it's not low on fluid. If anything, it's over full. I think the main problem is that the kickdown linkage needs readjusted. So once I took care of that, it was time to pull the carburetor bowl off the front of the carburetor and take a look at the power valve and see what jets are in the front of this thing. After I cleaned up all the gasket material off the metering block, I decided to change the 6.5 out for a 7.5 power valve to help bring the fuel curve in a little bit faster. I also swapped out the number 65 Holly jets for number 69s. Then, it was time for a test drive. I could tell as soon as I pulled the old Chevy 2 out on the road that this thing is much happier. Throttle response and part throttle crews are absolutely perfect. You can literally stab the throttle from an idle and it'll light the tires. Now I let Billy drive this car last night before I had the carburetor all sorted out. So now is a perfect time to go down and visit him and let him take the car for a spin now that the carburetor is all sorted out. He's been so busy working on his S10 that he hasn't had time to even come look at the car, much less drive it unless I bring it to him. So that's exactly what June Pup and I are gonna do. I called Billy and let him know we were on our way, so he came right out, hopped in the car with me in June, and we took it around the block. It didn't take him long to realize that it cruised around a lot better, but wide open throttle is what he's really interested in. After Billy and I took a ride in the car together, I came back to the shop and brought the Malibu back in so I could start getting it ready to go test somewhere this weekend. I need to fill nitrous bottles and I still need to get that drum of fuel unloaded off the back of the dually. Thankfully, Uncle Buckwheat showed up just in time to help me get that taken care of. And knowing that he's been to the scrapyard today and hauling firewood in dad's old dump truck, I just can't wait to hear all the stories he's got to tell me about those experiences. Well, 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 look what the cat drug in. Did you get your scrap hauled okay? Yeah. Did you go get some firewood? Yeah. Good, good. Did you get it put away? Yeah, it's up at the barn. The day's almost over. You can go put your pajama pants on and sit out in the garage by your wood burner and just enjoy your pot roast or pot belly pie, whatever the hell that shit is you eat out there. <laughs> what is that crap? It's pot pies or whatever. <laughs> All right, well, I got a new thing for you today. You ready? Yeah. Vicky ordered that in special just for you. No, he didn't. Huh? That's for you, Vicky said. No. That isn't for me. That was from your buddy. See, that looks good on me, right? Look, I got the, the coon tail and everything. <laughs> so, Jimmy Dale told me I needed a coon skin cap or a coon hat, and I needed to go get a drum of race fuel and turn on both kits. And that is exactly what I plan on doing this weekend. Come on, we gotta go get that drum of fuel unloaded off the truck. It's messing your head. Well, Vicky got me the Wish version. It was like a hundred and some dollars for one with a coon head. This one was like 12 bucks. Could have went out back and just shot one. I went out back to fire up the John Deere to find out that Jeremy had left the damn thing running all day. He fired this thing up around noon in preparation to unload the drum and forgot it. So the tractor's been sitting back there running all afternoon with nobody in it. Now his response was, well, at least it'll be warm in there. And it should be, except for the blower motors aren't working. The ones that I just had him fix two weeks ago didn't stay fixed. So I guess we'll have to pull the top back off the tractor maybe next week and try and deal with that. But for right now, I'm just happy that I've got my drum of fuel unloaded and I've got the 64 warming up outside to take down to his house because it's supposed to be 17 degrees in the morning and I want the truck to be sitting inside just so I can go over everything real quick before I leave tomorrow, hopefully by mid afternoon. After I dropped the 64 off down at Jeremy's to put inside his shop, I came back to find Miss Vicky getting ready for the giveaway tonight. I've got to give away one of these two gas 750 carburetors, and it looks like she's got plans to give away a whole bunch of other stuff tonight as well. It's hard to tell what she's gonna come up with next. All right, squirrel, here we go. It's, it's your time. big moment. Time to pick a winner. Time to pick a winner. Yep. Somebody is gonna win one or the other of my 
750 gas carburetors, mm -hmm. right? And whoever we pick, we'll contact them and see which one they would like. And how will we contact them? Well, if they provided an email, an email, an email, we'll email them. If they didn't provide an email, we'll have to fly a dove. <laughs> We're their shit out of luck is what you're saying. So what else you got laid out here? You giving all this stuff I away too? I feel a little generous. Well, so we're going to give away a mug. Oh, great. And a sign. There's another mug to come back broke. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. You know it's no, going to happen. No. You know it's going to happen. I'm going to package it in extra secure bubble wrap. All right. Let's do this. Let's get this over with. Okay. Drum roll, no drum roll. We don't even need one. That's pretty good, actually. Okay. Have you got the numbers entered I into have the computer? I have the numbers entered. You've so, got my laptop in here. Yes. And I or I entered the beginning from February 1st. Uh-huh. No, January 1st. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> Cut that. Fix no, it. I'm not fixing Just it. Just fix Just it. Just do it. Okay. okay. From January 1st to January 31st, mm -hmm. every order. Every order. So I entered the start number and the ending order number. Okay. And we're gonna have it pick one. All right. All right. Now, are you gonna refresh this? Yes, it's ready. Oh. Here we go. I'm gonna hit generate. Yeah. Boom. What's the number? 9071. 9071. Let me look at this here. Make sure she doesn't have any screwiness going on. 9071. Now, don't be getting close into people's personal Well, now, information. listen here. Everybody wants to know you're not s screwing this up or just, know. Okay. you know, 9071. Are you ready? No. John Hyatt. John Hyatt. Des Moines, Iowa. In Des Moines, Iowa. Yep. Has one, one or the other of these two carburetors. Yeah. Yep. So, what was his name? John, John Hyatt. Okay, write it down this time. Remember yes, the last right. time? That was a fiasco. You had me going through the video because you didn't write them down. Congratulations to John Hyatt. We will email you or comment which one you want, either the Quick Fuel 750 or the Proform 750. Both are gas carburetors. Uh, this one has been on the Malibu, been on Stranger Things. This one has been on the 55 Chevy. I bought it brand new at Jegs, and it's been on the 55 Chevy. We will be replacing it so he does with have an ATM. An email, so we will email him. No phone number, but he did give an email. Okay, so, so Mr. Hyatt. We'll be emailing you. We'll be emailing you. We'll be emailing you tonight. Yes. Right, Not so in the comments. Let's Not do another Not in the comments. One. Let's do Never one. in the comments. Let's do it. Yeah, nobody ever is going to win a prize. And I know it seems so exciting when you get that post to your comment. And it, it looks like the Old Man's Garage logo. And it says, you have won and da-da-da. It's not us. Won. We don't do it that way. No. Ever. We do it through email. Ever. I still have people all the time All asking. right, okay. All right. Here we go. Hit it again. What are we, what, what are we giving away now? 8923 is going to get a sign. Eight nine two three. Eight nine two three. This is taking a long time. Hey, go lay this by the carburetor. Oh. All right, it's Lisa Piles. Lisa Piles. And she's from Mexia, Texas. So Lisa Piles from Mexia, Texas, uh -huh. is getting what? One of these signs. Sign. Yep. She's getting that one. Okay. Next one is going to get the gasoline and freedom sign. Well, you got to hit it on the computer. Hey, generate. Hold on. You're a mess. Generate. Eight, nine, three, two. Eight, nine, three, two. This is John Lee from West Milford, New Jersey. Huh. So John Lee from West Milford, New Jersey. Want a gasoline and freedom metal sign there you go all right hit another number you got a mug oh my god <laughs> let's Listen, see those mugs were popular yeah well they weren't with me <laughs> uh let's see who gets to uh email us saying that their mug was delivered broken nope 9193 9193 summer franks 
from Durham, North Carolina. Okay, Summer Franks. Write that down. Mm -hmm. 9193. Put right. that with the mug. Put that with the mug. There you go. I don't know. You've got them laid out there. It's like false advertising now if you don't. Well, I wanted to let everybody know. But now you got to figure out what size they want and all that. Crap. Yeah, which I could do. But uh, I do want to let everybody know that the website got updated tonight because more are on the way. So, of these? Yep. These are hot sellers. And like, they No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's more on the way next week. And I've updated the website. Let's give one away. Let's do one more. How about we give one of those away? Give one of what? All that. No, because I only have particular sizes. These I know I have plenty of. Because she ordered too many of those. It was an accident. It's a hot topic. If you guys could please go to the website and find <laughs> the size in this stuff that you'd like. Okay, We'd so... like to get rid of that stuff because my sweet... Uh-oh. What are you saying? It's not selling. It is. I sell lots of it. It's Nobody like... wants it. Look, it's not selling. <laughs> from Charlestown, West Virginia, gets the Gas Pump Girl shirt. Gas Pump Girl shirt was who? He's so mad at me right Jay now. Jay <laughs> Cruz, Charlestown, West Virginia. Charlestown, West Virginia. That's not far. I got it. Oh, you, okay. You got it. All right. One That's more. There, there's another shirt. This one too? All right. Well, you laid them out. It's like false advertising if you don't do it. Josh Jenkin, Spokane, Washington. Oh, boy. So that's it. That's it for tonight. Congratulations to all the winners. I feel like I am definitely not going to be a winner tonight. All right. <laughs> Let me clarify something. Okay, clarify something. I over-ordered two, three, four, and 5X because I forgot that I had some coming and then I saw the shelf was bare, and then I ordered more before I realized they So I had double of two, three, four, and like five eggs. So you double ordered the most expensive sizes we could possibly yes. order, and there they are. Yes, but the most popular sizes are like the large and extra large, which I sell a lot of. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> You're just a pain in the butt. <laughs> okay. So, you would like to announce this month, February. 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 Okay. From the very beginning to the very end, every order gets you a chance to win. Ta da! This is a Jax Wax car care kit wash mitt, polishing towel, drying towel, applicator for super blue. I don't. Honest, I, I'm not sure what that's for, but you get a nice car wash bucket. You get super blue, mm -hmm. a bottle of super citrus, mm -hmm. a bottle of body shine, bug zapper, liquid, liquid carnuba, car wash soap, and glass cleaner. Come on. <laughs> All your favorite stuff. And there may be something extra special that I haven't picked up yet, and I can't make any promises. But there may be something a little bit even more special from Jack's Wax that I'll be picking up next week. Mm -hmm. Right? Is there anything else you would like to announce? No. Are we done? Did you tell people that we're going uh, racing? No. <laughs> we're going testing. We're going testing down south, and that's all we can say. To warmer weather. To warmer weather. We're not telling anybody where we're going. Why? Because it's private. It's private. And we will be back on Monday to tell everybody how it went. Maybe. Are we done? Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night. Can you wave? Why? Wave bye. Mm.